Connor, I need to have an intervention with myself today. Not yourself, Aiden. Myself, my silly self. Would you say you're, you're your own harshest critic? Perhaps. I mean, okay. yes, in terms of I keep saying like. There was a sequence last week where I said like about 90 times in about 90 seconds, I think, and it drove me crazy. Yeah, I'm really bad at that. I, I, I notice in the clips when I'm editing them. Yeah. I say uh, I say uh, a lot. I literally just did it then. See? Without even thinking. Dreadful. I just go uh, a lot and it just, it doesn't sound. And sometimes if I'm not feeling lazy, I'll I'll cut them out. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I'm like, I don't have time for this shit. Mood. The ums stay in and the ahs. I'm going to need Well, no, it's not about my shocking podcast ed- etiquette. It okay. is about me putting my phone on silent right now. But it's also not about that. It's mm-hmm. about David Tennant's new Sonic Screwdriver. Okay, last week on the record, I was sort of chatting a little bit of shit about it. Yeah, you slammed it. You were like... um you sort of started the chat by saying that you didn't mind it and at the mm. end of that three minute chat you went you know what I just don't like oh, this it this fucking sucks this Sonic is shit no well those words came out your mouth it's probably a bit harsh ah uh, you said it and, but then I, I sort of realised all the pictures I was looking at was with the prongs out yeah and it looks fucking bizarre and stupid and ridiculous as to why all the promo pictures have the prongs out is beyond me because when you put the prongs back up back up that thing looks pretty fucking sexy, and I'm I'm okay, okay with that. I'm, but just don't open them out. Don't just leave them up tight, tight, so it can fit in in an anal cavity, and that I'm happy. So only when the doctor's actually physically using the sonic screwdriver with the tongs out, which is probably going to be just put the tongs away, mate. Put the dogs will, away. Will it be like? I know Matt Matt did use the sonic without the tongs coming out sometimes. Yeah, it was like a rare little treat, which yeah. which I'm on board with. So, we don't need David going like. So when it isn't going bong mm-hmm. you'll be happy mate it's not a fucking transformer it's a sonic screwdriver oh uh, mate you need to talk to Russell about this Russell you know? my boy yeah it, my boy I've what? been seeing a lot of people with the uh, with the toy though and it looks cool and well, I even we, sent you that prop yesterday which is like a $2,000 I know prop. When it I, looks pretty sick it's when like I saw it 500 pieces all these like ones from uh, Comic Con that came out I was like look it looks fucking plastic like I'm not gonna lie it's like, fantastic the shiny bits look plastic as heck and so when that proper replica came out by a certain company, not sure what it was, I was like, damn, I could get around this. What is this, like $300 or something for a no. legit thing? Looks at the price. Oh my God. It's over $2,000. And also- I might have been looking at it in pounds because I think it was they... like 1200 Yeah, I don't know. It was in pounds, yeah. yeah. How do they make it so quickly? Did they have- Because I think they're an independent company- they probably got um, the team, the, the Who print. team probably got it to yeah. them beforehand. Okay. Yeah. Because as far as I could tell, it was like a, a bit of an independent company. Um, oh, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe like maybe they'll give them the design early and be like, we'll take yeah. a percentage of the sales. The, well, yeah, they have to anyways, because it's a, they've got to get the license to sell a Doctor Who product. Well, you can get stuff on Etsy and stuff. Okay, but that's fake. This is official merch. That's the difference. Is it official though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just like a. I thought it was just like a fan-made prop replica. No, no, this is like a proper right, replica. I'm, I see. I'm pretty sure I it see. is. Okay, uh, but they do look. Those prop replicas though look pretty cool. They look hot and spicy. Yeah, I know the Matt Smith one just looks pretty mm. stunning. I always wanted the Universal remote when I was a kid. Yeah, and, and and that itself was like a proper replica yeah, one. Yeah, that is. Yeah, where's Dope. where's all that? Where's all that trash that I can buy? Well, this is the closest thing to it, which once. is a lot. We have uh, okay. So just staying on the Sonic though, mm-hmm. uh, we've seen it's like bi color. So no, bi color is two color, isn't it? Bi is two. Maybe. Yeah, that's what bi means two. That's what a bicycle is. Correct. So it's it's quad colored. It's probably a better way of saying this. Quad because of four. Because four. We, yeah, we've seen four on colors. these toys that it, hey, it goes man, blue don't call them toys. it goes yellow it goes green it goes red yeah that is cool so i'm i'm keen to see that i wonder if it's just Wait, like it goes what blue blue and green and, and yellow and red you know who had a uh, green sonic marty smith correct well, who had the yellow one huh ray in the rise of skywalker you got me there mate pranked you got me there but yeah the I'm extended keen. universe that um, we were all hoping for no <laughs> okay but I'm keen for that. And the other thing I want to just sort of throw at you is, I don't know if you You seem saw, like you're trying to like defend yourself from last week a little bit. I'm backtracking you, a little bit. Are you mad that people are getting a bit crazy at you for this no and the Sonic? No one's crazy at me. Oh, I've seen fine. some comments. Oh, fuck. Mm. Well, don't worry. It's not as bad as the comment last <laughs> week that said, you guys are a bunch of jokes. Yeah, that well, was great. we are in a way. I know. I took that. Jokes? As, like multiple that jokes? That was a W. Yeah, it means they're funny, right? <laughs> a joke? We're just multiple jokes, not just a joke? That's not an insult. Was that on the podcast episode? It was, was it on the clip? podcast episode itself. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's a win. 
But no, what I was going to say is that is, so, you know, like uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was that video that came out and we talked about it and it was like the first scene of the Star Beast and it was Correct. all like the onset footage of David going around and they sort of pieced it together like it was a scene mixed in with the trailer footage and stuff like that. How could I forget? Yeah. There's a shot in that of David sonicking. Right, and I, I think um, I don't want to take full credit for this. I think uh, Crispy brought this up in his video where he broke it down, but he he starts sonicking and then he starts waving his hand in the air like he's flicking through a screen. Yeah, I kind of noticed that. Yeah. Do you think this Sonic, when he zaps it and the prongs open up, a little like HUD comes ah, up? Almost and he like can a bit like, of a Tony Stark AI kind yes, of thing. So oh, rather that's... than looking at it and just reading it off of the metal thing, he's actually got a screen that he can look at. Ooh. I, I think that's what the prongs are. It's like the okay it's like here's the light beam i the- think i'd have to wait to see it in live action to give my opinion on it i think it's a fucking terrible idea it might look okay <laughs> it, it might, might it look might. bad i don't know i'd, I'd have to wait to see mm. i yeah that's a good point though because i did know i was wondering what he was doing with that shit and there that was also sense, though. there was well, also a that's why common you're us. on when they announced the sonic screwdriver they're like what special talents does it have in store You'll just have to wait and see or something, which hints that maybe there is something more to it than a traditional Sonic. We'll have to see. I'm not against the whole HUD thing. I think it does sound stupid just because, I mean, I love how silly it is for the Doctor just to be like, oh, yes, the atmospheric reading of this planet is 790. And he's literally just looking at like a metal fucking thing in his hand. I always thought it, I always thought it had like a, like a link to his brain. I always thought it was like a psychological... A psychic like, sonic screwdriver. Well, no, I thought like I thought it would just scan and then like in his head it would... I don't think so. No. I think it does. No. I'm pretty it's sure. It's not, mate. I'm pretty you're sure. making that shit up. I'm not making you're it up. You're trying to... You're like someone trying no. to like fix your own plot holes. You're like, yeah, no. just, it goes to his head. Don't well, worry, how guys. How does he know? But that's the whole joke. It's kind of like the whole time he's just looking at the that's Sonic why for reading. The, you know, with the with the in Day of the Doctor when it's like um, the calculation still going and David like goes up and listens to it. No, but like, that's just them being silly. To Connor, his head. No, it's not fucking Sonic. You know, he's always it like, is. I've got an app for that. Yeah, like because it's all just done through the nah. Sonic. I think you're wrong. You man. think he's got a HUD in his head? No, I don't think you have to have something installed. I just think like <laughs> he's it, got a microchip. It generally, like just it just gives you like a it's like a wave of like information that just goes. Right, so the 13th Doctor's sonic spoon dildo mm-hmm. that she made in Sheffield is linked to her head. Bro, is that what you're telling time me? Lord. That's, she's smart. Now you're just making shit up. No, I'm not. I'm just being smart about it. Made out of spoons? Who cares? It, it, it still works with spoons. I'll spoon you. Okay. okay. Yeah. okay. Actually... If the Sonic, it'd be like the Sonic glasses if that thing happens. And I kind of didn't like how you can kind of see all the stuff the Sonic was scanning. I like the HUD on it. It always looks Sonic. a bit weird to me. Yeah. So, okay, fair enough. Like Doctor how. Doctor Who's a show that we're talking about. Then again, the, the Doctor did have his Sonics like wired into his brain because his Sonic Sonnies, because that's how he could see when he was blind, which then made the whole his blind point completely irrelevant to Series 10 because he could still see. Do you his- catch my drift now? No, I, I don't think that's right with the Sonic. Does anyone actually have an answer to yeah, that Yeah, let question? us know. Do you think Connor's a moron or am I dumb? Excuse me. There must be an answer to that. One of us is really fucking after stupid. Si- after 60 years. One of us is really fucking knows. stupid. I'm going to put that out there. It's either me or you. And I don't know who it is. I don't think it's me. I'm just going to be honest. I don't think it's me. How else did he see what it is then? But that's the whole prank. It doesn't make any It's like a big fucking super- prank, so That's what you're, you're saying that like it is dumb on purpose. I don't think it's dumb on purpose. I think it kind of started off like that, but it, like it started off like an accident sort of thing uh, but now they just kind of now play into it a device. little bit and they're like oh look i can i can hear i can oh i can i can taste it i don't you know it? i just okay. licked it okay uh, on today's show uh, russell t davis gives us a big t- 60th anniversary tease is it a legit tease or is it just a bit of mayhem from the man himself the quiz no, is no. going to continue wonderful youtuber extraordinaire josh nares they're going to quiz us today on the show which i am a lot of classic questions in common i believe Really? Is that what they said? For you, probably. Fuck's sake! I don't, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> the Sonic told me in my head. The Sonic, right. Oh, you had the warning. You've had... You know how you... Last week I you were like... Any, no, I didn't get any Last warning. week you were like, Aiden checks the questions. I didn't get any warning. I bet that's sort of what you were doing. I didn't read that. You were I, like, hey, Josh, can you tell me the questions that you're doing? I just want to... Just want to... Give me the first two words of each question. That is... That's a complete and utter lie. All right. Then we're going to review Praxius, which everyone loves. It's everyone's favorite episode. The best episode of all time, Praxius. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast channel. We're getting very close to a thousand subscribers. Hit eight hundred this week, Connor. High five, mate. 
We're just too good. We are too good. Unless we lose some more when it's on uh, 799 again by the time this episode comes out. I'm really depressing. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at 50Doctor. You can donate to us on the ko to help us buy some brand new spanking equipment. We're on TikTok, at 50Doctor Who. That was a mouthful. We're on X at 50 Doctor. Oh, yeah. It's not Twitter anymore. It's fucking... Well, it's, mine's mine's it's still, still Twitter. Mine's still Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I, think you, I think it's still Twitter. I think it's just Twitter X. No, I think it's X. A way to make things complicated, Elon Musk. Well, either way, they got rid of the bird icon, which is ridiculous. Oh, the birdie. The little cute birdie bird. Tweet, also, tweet time to sleep. Later in the show, we're going to be talking about Barbie Heimer and a couple other things that we've watched this week. Let's get into the show, it's Con. Get explosive. Boom boom. Oh yeah. I'm a Barbie fitty, girl. Fitty, 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 T's nuts. That's the t-shirt. Russell T's Davies. And then it's like, just like his face outline and his glasses. Cause they're all very, that's it. I like that. We, that's our bootleg merch. Merch line. Come He'd on wear up it. to he some would... Etsy or Redbubble. Um, <laughs> yeah. Etsy and Redbubble. Yeah. The, the most reliable websites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go on. I, I'm dying to hear your thoughts on this. Cause you're such a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. You're yeah. like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. And I know you said before, Russell has said that he is putting out misleading stuff. Yep. And you're a skeptic, so go on. Let's give the context. Say how much. Say, say how much it's sh- load of bullshit. So the official Doctor Who Instagram account. Yeah. I think overnight, so on like Wednesday or whatever, just posted a little clip from the the title reveal trailer, right? It was and it was wild, the footage for Wild Blue Yonder, and it ended with the Wild Blue Yonder logo, the uh, title card, and the caption was just like, "What happens to the Doctor? Like, whatever secrets are in store or whatever." Russell T Davies himself, current showrunner, commented on the post saying, "Oh my God, that's." bell emoji and then they apple emoji and clock emoji until spark emoji explo- uh, fire emoji lightning emoji and penguin emoji mm. so a lot to dissect there some people mentioned bell from flux is bell returning from flux some no. people mentioned apple for the 11th doctor who notoriously doesn't like apples True. and uh the clock apparently means the 12th Doctor, because the clock is striking 12, and obviously his title sequence is all about clocks. And- reaching there a bit, Aiden, I think. Well, you just let me keep going if you like, because this is going to reach even further, mate. Okay. There's a notorious, I-, I think this was in the Wilderness Years, companion called Frobisher. Mm hmm. He's a fucking penguin. Okay. Yeah, I've heard about Frobisher. So, people are saying... Yeah, I have, yeah. I mean, look, Beat the Meep was one of those things that was never going to make it to TV. It was such a loosey-goosey character in the comments. That everyone was like, no fucking way. Yeah. Could you see a companion that's a penguin from expanded media making it into the mainstream TV I could show? see as a scene. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, like, as like playing the same character that was that companion. So, even if it was just a scene, but it is, it is Frobisher. Would you... I kind of got the I kind of got the idea that it was um, Penguin with his ass on fire because of that's what ah, Bill says about P uh-huh. when he runs. Uh, that that could be reaching. I didn't. I don't know. I mean, like, sure, we got beat the meat. How can we? Why not have Frobisher the Penguin? Mm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to um, decode all this. Yeah, Bell Bell to Saint John. Do you maybe? think he's actually teasing something? Yeah. I think it's a lot of bullshit. I think he's literally just there like, oh my God, like just winding us all up. Well, which I'm on board with. What I don't get is why do they just randomly post the, only the scenes from, uh, well, Blue Yonder. Like they didn't, they didn't post like the Star Beast as its own little I think, thing. I think they know that we know that Wild Blue Yonder is the best one and is the one that has all the amazing stuff in it. Well, we I don't think know anything about it. it. I think that, you know, that's why I think we... Mm-hmm. And they're, yeah. they, they're playing into that 100%. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, and I, and I think we're, we're also saying that's going to be the cameo episode. So yeah, the Bells of St. John is back. Um, so what, the Apple. episode's back? <laughs> well, you know, that's a Matt Smith episode, one of your favourites. Let's go! Uh, Apple could be Matt Smith, yeah. Clock could be Capaldi. Mm. Uh, explosions. But I don't know. I'll say this, okay. Uh, uh, a clock. 
Mm-hmm. This is a time travel show that has notoriously featured many explosions and fires. And penguins. Is this just around... I think this is... I don't think this is legit. I think this is Russell just winding us all up. Being like, here you go. What does this mean? Maybe well, it does mean something cool, but... Imagine afterwards he'll be like... And now I can just say it normally. And he'll be like, oh my God, that's the... Blah, 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 and it all makes sense. Yeah, he'll be like, that's Raxacolical Pharaoh... I can't even say it. Raxacol- that's Raxacolical Pharaoh Why can I say this? This hot chocolate's gone to my head. Oh my God, that's... I don't know. I don't, oh my God, that's Belle. Oh my God, that's... Oh my God, that's Belle from Flux. Oh my God, that's Sting. Oh my God, that's Ring. I don't know. Apple. What rhymes with Apple? Rapple. Saddle. Sa- uh, cackle. You think it's a rhyme? It's got to rhyme with whatever it is. Bell. Clock. John Barron's back. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> now that's good. See, we don't, need, we don't need booze to be funny, folks. No, yeah, we were doing a sober show today, folks. Yeah, we sure are. I don't know. I, 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 I really don't know. I, 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 yeah. Is he, is he just... Is he just reaching for random shit? Maybe. I think he's reaching, mate, and I love it. I'm not. I'm. I'm so on board with him. Just like What's every like, now and then spitting facts, and every now and then just being like, blah. Because it's less than three months now as well, which is cool. Far out. What are we in? It's almost end of July, isn't it's it? It's almost August. And then August, September, October. Oh my god, dude! This is so close. This it's, is so exciting. It's coming, bro. I'm just. I reckon, like, I reckon the last three months of this year is just gonna be awesome. Like, I'm gonna explode. So many. You know what? You know what? I feel like God has just like descended down from earth and helped me because it's Russell T Davis in this. I'm, pr- I'm I could be completely wrong here, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure on the same week I get to watch Wild Blue Yonder and see Coldplay live. Oh I'm pretty God. sure the stars will align. The stars wars. Also, I want to do. Um, I'm just so curious on how people are gonna like, like mostly overseas viewers this is so boring and lame but i'll say anyway sure about when people are actually going to watch it because i'm gonna i'm gonna get up i'll get up it'll be like maybe 4 a.m or something but i'll get up yeah once we know that when a second it drops i'll be like boom get yeah on that shit especially if it goes back to sunday uh, saturday nights and so sunday mornings i will 100 percent at like 4 a.m be watching that live and you will be at my house at like 5 30 a.m and we'll be recording yeah, I'll, be, I'll be like yeah I'll be in there like swimwear. That's yeah, what I'm mate. saying. Like, it'd be so... I'm just excited. I feel I, I, I feel like a kid going to sleep mm. on like Christmas Eve. Yeah. Getting ready to wake up and watch the Star Beast. Like, I think it'd be, it'd be such an exciting time to... Yes. To Which figure... Uh, to just, you know, I don't know. Is a, a good thing to say. We're going to be doing two shows a week during November or, or around the episodes. So, oh, I, yeah, I told you this the other day. We were did talking, you? And you were like, that sounds like a great idea. Did I? Yes. Because we said Jeez. we're going to do a How review much show. Last week to drink? Far out. We're going to do a review show and we're going to do a preview pod. Mm. So we'll break down the right. episode no, just I gone, do that. and then a few days later we'll have an episode coming out. That's looking forward to the episode that's coming up, and yeah. maybe we'll have some listener questions involved in there. Yeah, or, that, or that show's just kind of like a kind of like a chilled out reggae vibe, you know? Like oh yeah, kind of sat here and just like chilling, and reggae. smoking a doobie. Yeah, mate. I'd be you know, like, I was I, having I a guitar. Like, did this in Amsterdam? Yeah, this is the Amsterdam story. Classic. You know? Now that'd Classic. be fun though. Like, okay, can we? It'll, it'll be good to have like a nice laid back show. Which isn't just Aiden frantically trying to get through the fucking run sheet like the world's about to explode. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Can we move on, please? Yeah, see? What's Can next? We, what's next is everyone's next! favorite segment. It's time to ruin Connor and I's friendship. With, can I say it? Go. With the listener's quiz. Okay, so the listener's quiz is the segment. Are you going to tell me not to explain this like you did last week because you were so fed up? When do you listen to me? Okay. The listener's <laughs> quiz is our listeners, they come in and they start a fight between Connor and I. Mm. Throughout series 12, listeners have been sending in questions for us to uh, quiz questions to find out who's the better. Who we earn every At the end hey. of every episode, someone gets a point. Whoever got the most questions right gets a point. Yep. And then at the end of the season, whoever has the most points wins a Tim Shaw pop vinyl. And to keep you updated as well, so far on the leaderboard, Aiden is currently ahead with three points. I am one behind with two points. Mm -hmm. So I will say this, if you do win this, that puts you two ahead and that's pretty hard to come back from. I think anyone who's like at least one ahead is is, is a bit of a, because we don't have, we have like five episodes left. Yeah. 
So if I win this, we're neck and neck again. I think that's good. I don't want to be too behind. Yeah. But so let's see. Let's uh, find out. So let's, lovely. We're about uh, to find out right now. We keep saying listeners, but realistically, it's our, our friends, our online friends from the Doctor Who community that are sending us in questions. So this week, lovely, the one of the best and the nicest YouTuber of all time. Yeah, be careful what you say and you might Josh step up a little Snares. bit and say that... Uh, they're the best. Josh Nairs is here to quiz Who us. Knows. Let's hear from them. Hello, it's me, the official Josh Nairs. I'm very happy to be here. Love the 50% Doctor Who podcast. Love you boys. And very, very happy to be back. Okay, so the first round will be about my favorite topic, which is me, myself, Josh Nairs. All right, so Aiden, the first question is, who is the nicest Australian Doctor Who YouTuber? Connor, what is the name of the short film I shot in Perth? Wow. Okay. Okay, so this is... This is brilliant. This is tough. Because the obvious answer... We know the obvious answer that Josh... My the Daleks. Perth. Yes, My the Daleks. But here's That'd the thing... That would be bad if I got that wrong. Notoriously, I have said Crispy Pro is the nicest Australian YouTuber, but... Mm -hmm. Is Josh going to, like, change the answer? So they said, who's the nicest? Yes. Okay. Which, in the law of 50%, yeah. would be Crispy Pro. Uh, yeah. But it's like... You know, Josh is equally as nice. It was just a figure of speech that came out of my mouth in the moment right. talking to Crispy Pro. You're yourself a bit of a hole there, right? And I see. No, well, my thing is, what if Josh says no? I'm the nicest YouTuber, and I have to sit here and deal with the consequences. I think that's just part of the show, you know. <laughs> Go on. Okay, I am going to say crispy just because that's the law of the show okay all right let's hear from josh all right and the answers are for aiden the nicest australian doctor who hootuber is of course crispy pro you may have said my name i know you think about that all the time you're like, oh josh is the nicest but actually i'm the meanest australian doctor who hootuber so like don't mess that up or else and for lovely Connor, the short film that I shot in Perth was The Might of the Daleks. And if you haven't seen it, check it out on the official Josh Nair's Doctor Who YouTube channel. Shameless. Shameless and I love so it. So I said Might of the Daleks, not The Might, but I'm it's still going to give fine. myself a point because yeah. I deserve it. I'll let you off just this once. Yeah, I'll let you off. You better get all your theirs and your ands in the right places this time, Connor. That was a... Well, that was a pretty hard one for you, actually. It could have gone either got, way. You got it through, which is good. All right, let's for hear you, from Josh... Least. For round two. Round two. All right, round two. Um, it would be weird if I didn't do a round about the missing episodes, but because you're mainly new series watchers, I thought I'd make it easier and do multiple choice. So, Aiden, many of the missing episodes of 1960s Doctor Who have been animated. Which of these people involved has been called the enemy of all Doctor Who fans by Ian Levine? Is it A, James Goss, B, Rob Ritchie, C, Gary Russell, or D, Nissa. And Connor? Your question is, a telesnap is an off-air photograph of Doctor Who, basically an old version of a screenshot. Who took these telesnaps? Was it A, Dennis Spooner, B, John Cura, C, Paul Venezes, or D, Nissa? <laughs> right. I'm going with Rob Ritchie. Um, I have absolutely no idea. Rob Ritchie is one of the names I, I, I am familiar with from the animation, so I'm just going to run with that. Um, God, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say, do you know? No, not a clue. Okay. Tell us I'm going to say, C, whoever that person was. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> the name, I have no idea. Let's find out. All right, let's go to the answers. And for Aiden... It was C, Gary Russell. Ian Levine said, Gary Russell is the enemy of all Doctor Who fans. His crime? Uh, making artistic choices that Ian didn't like. Um, which is basically, you know, the death penalty. And for Connor, the answer is B, John Cura. Well, I've actually made a documentary about John Cura and his telly snaps. So if you got that one wrong, Connor, you're kind of cancelled. Sorry. Just cancelled by oh, Josh Nats. Okay, we're both wrong, so it's even going into the last round. Okay, let's go to round three. Tiebreaker. The next round is the impossible round because you're my impossible boys who are wrapped in a skirt that's a bleh. No, I can't even finish that line. Disgusting. Anyway, Aiden, your question is, how many times is the word dog used in school reunion? 
And Connor, your question is, how many times is the word dog used in the 11th hour? Okay, so uh, a deduction is tin dog mm -hmm. is said a lot. It's a like, lot, yeah. I'm a tin dog? Uh, yeah. Um, For 11th hour, there's the, the prisoner zero has the dog. Yeah. But I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> a better question would have been how many times has Prisoner Zero said in Lemon Power? Because it's like Prisoner Zero has escaped. Has escaped. Uh, like the Prisoner Zero thousand. has come for the human residents, and the human residents have. <laughs> oh God! Uh, uh. Ooh, I'm gonna say eleven. I was gonna say thirteen, but I'm gonna say eleven for dog. I'm sure it's just something like there's a guy and his dog. That was just a man and his dog. Mm. Uh, maybe. No, nah, I'm going thirteen. I'm going thirteen. Yeah, you know I'm gonna go zero. You're going zero. That the dog dog was not sent once in the was. hour. I think that's a trick question. Okay. Well, how many times could be zero? I don't think I don't think they say dog. Let's find out. All right, time for the answers. Aiden, score reunion used the word dog thirteen times. Oh my god! And Connor, the eleventh hour used the word dog eleven times. The clue was in the title. You kind of got like an easier one there. I'm not trying to choose favourites, but I think one of you said that I was the nicest Doctor Who YouTuber and someone didn't. So like, I'm not saying like I made the questions harder for one other person than the other. I'm just saying. Anyway, thank you for having me. Love to be here. Love you boys. And I will be seeing you soon. And next time I come to Perth, Aiden, don't leave the state. I saw that you stayed there for a crispy. I thought the feud was over, but I think it's actually being reignited. So watch out. Okay, I want to say thank you, Josh. That was amazing. But I am fucking shocked. I hate this so fucking much. And I know how much that makes it look like I fucking previewed oh, this shit. I hate this. But I promise you, hand on my heart, I did not preview this shit I at all, hate Connor. This. I did not at all. I, I actually think I'm psychic. Fuck you. Aiden's on. Okay, no. Four? I was jumping between 11 and 13. Your answer was 11. I genuinely like this shit happens to me often. Alright. Where I'm Shut up. I think I'm not kidding. Fuck this. Do you think I looked at that in advance? No. Okay. No, I, I don't think you did that. Well you're on four, I'm on two. I hate this shit. I'm in shock. I'm like Fuck! I cannot like, believe If you win next week, like, it's pretty much game over. Well bring your best fucking your best version of you next week, Connor. And uh Zero times. You'll get it <laughs> 11 times it gets mentioned? Of course! 11 times? I knew they at least said it once. I don't know, I thought it was a trick question. No. Mm. No. Fuck's sake. I just feel like all the comments are going to be like, Aiden, definitely check that answer in advance. I'm so mad right now, it's not even funny, eh? Well, you saw me unzip the zip right in front of you. I had not opened these files yet. Is that what a zip file is? A zip is when you download a file as one. Right. Like multiple files as one. I ain't saying you looked. So I, I had not opened- So if opened anyone says you looked, I, such a trap. What? I opened that zip right in front saying, of you. I'm I just saying, I didn't say you looked, okay. so... Well, I didn't look. Big Mad from Big C over here. Um, I did so well last time. What happened? It's not over yet, mate. That was luck. That what? was a lot of luck and a lot of Aiden's psychic energy. So we have... Maybe it's... maybe my No, we've only got four episodes left after this. Maybe my laptop is like the Sonic screwdriver. It's like yeah, psychic links the answer. Now yeah. you get it. There's only four episodes left now, so... Yes. If you win next week... It's impossible for me to win. Um, you could get a draw. We could get a draw. We could get it's a like draw, the which right we now, buy right? each other a Tim oh, Shaw then, final. Then, then we have to do some kind of tiebreaker. Then it'd be like a tie. Yeah, I have to do like a um, like a like a hot question or something. Like that. Yeah, know, like who can guess is first. Yeah, yes. Right. We have like someone zoom right. into us and do like a face off, and we just keep right. asking questions until this sucks. Okay. Well, well, this is just painful. Yep. God, I wish I had a beer right now so I could drown my sorrows. <laughs> All I've got is an empty coffee. What do you have? A cappuccino? Uh, well, I don't know. I just did that. <laughs> no, I got a flat white. A flat, you're a flat white boy. I'm a latte boy yeah. with almond milk. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so what's this almond milk thing about? You just don't like drink, drinking cow's milk? Um, Which is fair enough, by the way. Well, it was a little bit of that. It's a little bit of like, I think it's a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. um, How'd you milk an oak? How do you milk an oak? Yeah. I'm just kidding. I know how you eat milk oak. oats. Right. You squeeze them. Like a, I think you do. Like an utter. You twist and squeeze it. Almond milk's pretty good though, actually. It's amazing. You can have it cold, you can have it warm. Literally, I went to a cafe. Oh, you know what started it actually? 
was um, I went to a coffee shop like a year and a half ago and I asked for full cream. No, I asked for skim milk. Right. Um, and they were like, oh, we're actually out of that at the moment. Really and I was, like, almond. I was like, oh, just do full cream. Then they're like, oh, we're actually out of that as well. And right. they were like, almond or oat? And I'd had oat before and I knew I wasn't. No, it was almond or soy. And I was like, I'm not having fucking soy milk, mate. So I had almond. And I was like, this is actually really good. And then I like Googled, like, what's the deal with it? And yeah, there was like some health benefits and, and like benefits across the board. And I was like, why would I turn back from this now? No, nah, good on you. Has, and it's like a little bit sweeter as well. So if you ever have like a coffee that's maybe a little bit too strong mm. or something, it's kind of there to help you out a little bit as well. All right, Aiden. Mm-hmm. You are calcium king. The king. The king, the king of calcium. How many coffees a day do you have? Um, Not as much as I used to. I I can go days without coffees now. Oh, because you were a big like caffeine boy for like in terms of energy drinks and stuff for a oh, while. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah. So I don't know. I think because tonight... I knew we weren't drinking, so I was like, I'll just I'll just get a coffee instead. And I started this new like um medication on Monday, which is right. like a parent med, like a parent like with my Lexapro. Mm-hmm. And like it just shook me. Like it takes your body like a good week to get used to it. Yep. And I just feel like I've been hit by a truck. Like boom, boom. everything's just like I just feel like I have like a ton of weight on me right now. And like everything is just a huge like, I got to like one o'clock today at work mm-hmm. and I was like Dead. so tired, like knackered. So I was like, shit, I need like something to boost me up. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was good though, actually. Got a little donut with it as well. A little donut? Reading yeah. my uh, Waters of Mars novel, which I'll talk about in the uh, What the Boys slash 50% the, of a 20... I don't even really know what it's called. We've rebranded a segment that's coming up later in the show. Yeah, so we'll get to that shortly. I was that, so I had a bit of fun, you know, with my so, donut and my coffee. Yeah, okay. All right. So I was going to ask you about that now, but you want to save that till later. We can do that later. Ask oh, yeah. We'll, 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 do it. we'll do it with the other 50% because right. um, I'm dying to talk about Praxis, bro. Bro, Praxis is oh, the episode oh, sorry, we're here Praxis. today. It is here for today. I forgot a word there. It is the sixth episode of the 12th series of the British Science Fiction Television Program, Doctor Who. First broadcast on BBC One on the 2nd of February 2020, written by Pete McTai and Chris Chibnall, directed by the Lord and Saviour. Jamie J-M-S. Magnus Stone, the 13th Doctor and her companions, Graham, Ryan, and Yaz, search across multiple countries to investigate strange phenomena, including birds acting strangely and a oh. British astronaut, Adam Lang. Episode was watched by 5.22 million viewers and received mixed reviews from critics. Back in the day, Connor, couldn't tell you a thing. I couldn't... Uh, usually... Even if we didn't like an episode or something, we could tell you I didn't like it back mm. in the day. I honestly have no recollection of watching this episode. This is the first time I've watched this episode as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has that. Um, it, it's not very memorable, I think. No. Yeah, I think I think all I can remember about watching it was just being really bored. And I think after last week's episode, it, it's a real, it's a real like dip, yeah. I think in quality mm. and that's kind of all i can remember about it and seriously i generally think this was like the second time i've ever watched it i think i watched it like once and yeah never revisited it again. i think i've seen it twice before because really i need to be revisited <laughs> i always rewatch them when i get the blu-rays yeah but in 2023 connor what are you thinking about it what are you thinking good bad ugly it's just boring it's just boring i, I don't my know head. i, I kind of like i kind of like how it starts and I think it's, you know, I respect, I respect the balls the episode has, but I think in the day it had too many characters and it was a cool thing to start with, but then like it started to just really annoy me. Mm-hmm. And I think unfortunately the worst part about it was that I just wasn't engaged in the story. I found it very convoluted. And even when it finished, I was like, that was such a convoluted story. And it felt quite preachy to me mm-hmm. in a way. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say you can't do like a, episode on like what's it pollution or what what's like the it? plastic like, in the ocean basically. yeah like plastic in the ocean is probably a smart word for it but yeah. um you know i'm not saying you can't do an episode about that but i was just like this just kind of like why does every time they try and do like a message in this era it always comes across, across quite preachy i quite I like this one i thought Pre- this one was preach, done quite well preachious there's probably a couple it. of lines of dialogue that were on the nose but i think you know what's a chris Chibnall script without having some dialogue that tells you everything that's happening you know why is chris Chibnall on this script I, I guess he just did more than like more than a couple of drafts there's, there's some percentage that if they do if a showrunner does a draft and changes this much a set amount of it they then have to get a writer's credit right 
Um, so that's what I assume happened here. But no, because I remember I was doing some work as a runway photographer for a fashion show a few years ago. And it was like an eco fashion show. Mm-hmm. And they were saying... Oh, yeah, when I was talking to, like, the costume designers and stuff, they were telling me all about, like, microplastics and stuff. I'd never fucking heard of them in my life. And so this, like, 18, 19-year-old Aiden was like, what the heck is is this stuff? And so the fact that that is, like, a big topic in this, I thought was, like, that's clever. We are full of plastic, which is weird and kind of scary, mm. you know? And it's a great idea for an Auton story, which we didn't get. Like, imagine, like, everyone starts... I don't know. Like, the plastic starts... Right. ...controlling humanity. Right. And Autons, the birds... And the birds. I remember everyone thought it was a Sea Devils episode. Yeah. And uh, I think particularly because uh, Chibnall was co-writing, everyone was like, well, it must be there because if Chibnall was co-writing. Yeah. And um, knowing the season, they wasn't... probably were like, you'll never guess what happens yeah, in this episode. in this episode, <laughs> the birds have fallen from the sky <laughs> and you'll never guess what's you'll inside never... <laughs> them. It's plastic. <laughs> yeah. I I, uh, I was kind of, when I first watched it, I was like, are the Sea Devils going to rock up? I mean, of course, we did get them eventually, like, next season Mm -hmm. or with the specials. And, uh, yeah. A cool note, though, before I forget to say it. Sure. um, What's his name? Uh, The the guy who plays the um, ex-police officer. Yeah. um, Adam... No, Adam Lang is the astronaut. It is... Oh, Warren Brown plays Jake Willis. Uh, Yeah, so he just did a show called Ten Pound Poms. Oh, yes, he's in that, isn't he? He's in a lot of stuff. is half directed by Jamie Magnus Stone that's amazing so they have worked together in the past that's amazing they first worked together on this episode which I thought was a little cool little tidbit to bring up well when he was announced to be in this episode Warren Brown notoriously the meme circulated of him in his big finish photo shoot where he's like just in a normal plain tee and he's just kind of like flexing into the camera um, and it's like you, you'd recognize the photo 100% if wait I so he'd you. done Big Finish before he's done loads of Big Finish right I so see so he from, and I love him in it he's really good yeah he's great in he's the, a really good actor in the unit spinoff the unit Big Finish range he basically plays like is he like kind of more of a spy figure in unit I can't quite remember what his position is but basically he's only in like one episode of box set and there'll be like four episodes in like a right. season of these Big Finish sets and he'll always be in like usually one unless something different happens with the story and it'll just be like when they need like a stealth mission or like it's some like foreign usually he'll be off in like a foreign country doing some investigation right um and they'll just like recruit him for one episode to do a quick task right and he's like a really fun character and i think from memory the last one i listened to which was maybe number six he got like a really big role in it like he got really involved in the whole storyline which was really cool like doom if she was a man almost what? <laughs> like doom <laughs> Doomsday. Doomsday, yeah. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like Doomsday. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. So, is this, is it the same character from No, the, it's not. Oh, but okay. he might as well be because they're, I they're definitely that the same vibe. incredibly similar to what he's doing here. Definitely the same vibe of character. So, it would have been a cool little tie in for him to be like, I'm an ex unit officer or something like that, you know? But hey, have you got a vibe of what I'm thinking of the episode yet? I think you really liked it. You think I really liked Praxis? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, you sounded pretty positive about it. <laughs> I'm just a positive dude. Positive dude. Episode yeah, you kind of are, actually. Episode started and I went... Oh, hold on. I just knocked my mic out. There we go. I'm back. Episode started and I was like, this is really great. For like five minutes, I was like, this is thrilling. I'm what, on board with this. Flux energy, don't you reckon? Flux energy. Mm. I liked it. What was the opening scene? I don't remember, but I, uh, I liked it. Whatever it was. <laughs> I don't remember. I watched it a couple of hours ago. I should know this. I watched it on Monday. And I, I when okay. I drove here, I had to think, what episode are we talking about today, Aiden? I could not remember what episode we we're up to. Oh, it starts with um, Jodie being like, planet Earth, where there's oh, that's not good. 7 billion people, but we're all connected somehow in the atmosphere. Oh, no, that wasn't good. And then you just see the shuttle coming down to Earth. And it's, right. it's um, Mr. Ten Pound Pom's boyfriend. Okay, well, I did sort of like bits of this stuff. I remember I was hooked. I liked the way that the uh, companions were already like mid-investigation. Mm. I, I thought the Hong Kong, Hong Kong setting looked really nice. Mm. Um, and I also, a neat little thing I liked was like halfway through the episode, they actually switched the companion dynamics around. So they, they just sort of jumbled up who was with who, which I thought was like a, just a nice thing to sort of keep things interesting. After five minutes of the episode, I couldn't tell you what happened for about 25 minutes. Mm. And then I quite liked the last 10 minutes, 
Well, once they got into the underwater base, I was hooked back in because the, the, the plot the sort sea of, devil's base. <laughs> the the plot had all sort of come together by that point, and I thought the set was awesome. Mm. It felt really old school and not like the most best executed set in the world, but yeah, I thought it looked awesome and had like an atmosphere to it, and it just felt really classic Who to me, which I, I really just was on board for, and I, I liked the the giant set piece of like the big spaceship engine that we could see sticking out obviously the budget they only had budget for like one engine or whatever sticking out the side i thought that stuff was all just like really neat things but man there is 25 episode 25 minutes in this episode where i like vegged the fuck out i have no idea what happened it was so boring yeah and there's a lot of other small writing things in this that i'll get into shortly but that's where i'm sitting at the moment yeah, it sucks because, like, I'm a big Kablam fan. Kablam! I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, Kablam like, it. almost kind of like a Russell T. Davies kind of episode. Mm-hmm. Um, with this, I was, like, super excited to go into because I was like, I really like Pete's last story. Like, I think I'll enjoy this. And, yeah, I just found myself thinking it was really boring. Um, I do, I agree. Like, I do like the fast-paced energy of the episode, but after a while, it just started to, like, it started to like dwindle down a little bit and it was just like it was just it became a bit of like a one trick pony and mm. I wasn't enjoying it as much as I feel like I should have yeah and uh, I just felt like there was just too many characters too many characters I didn't care about or just storylines I just didn't care about and it was just it was just a, it was just a bit too much for me like yeah. it, it just was a bit too much and I kind of again I, I applaud it for trying to be this kind of like you know globe trotting story with all the different places they go to. And that is cool. But I don't know. I think there were just some problems and they kind of suck out to me with the, again, with the villain just being pants and like pants, the whole like plastic thing. I I, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Yeah. Nor did I really want to. I liked the virus thing. I liked the virus, like the, the visual aesthetic They're of the virus. Scary. I thought the, that was awesome. The gas masks are just scary in general. The like. gas masks were, but I'm, but I mean the, the actual. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah, it was definitely like quite gruesome and and like haunting. Yeah, for sure. I could definitely see kids being like scared by that. You definitely think that if you saw someone that you loved or were in a relationship would die from that virus, that you would be pretty traumatized for the foreseeable future, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to my big Dr. Energy moment of the week. This week's big Dr. Energy moment goes out to the girl whose girlfriend died and then she never referenced it for the entire rest of the episode. And then in the final scene of the episode, uh, she went off, decided to travel with the newly married... They were newly married couple of the boys, I think, were they? Uh, or were they just boyfriends? Well, the newlyweds? No, I think they were married. They were married, yeah. They were married, they were yeah. Married, yeah. She, she just goes off and travels with the with the newlyweds. Oh, because they have a honeymoon. She, yeah, I they see. go on the honeymoon. And she's yeah. like, oh, you know what? I'll just continue my two girls roaming vlog with, with these guys. And there'll be like three people roaming. Yeah, that was cringe. So she literally... Like, they couldn't have even snuck in like a line that was like, in honor of her, I'll do this. Right. I didn't. I thought they were just mates. I didn't catch on to the fact they were. Oh, ma- okay. Maybe not. Maybe maybe they were just mates. But regardless, uh, I, they're still they were still close. They were traveling. They had the vlog yes. together, which I found really cringe. They're either still. best friends or they're girlfriends. You know. Yeah. And and that did not come up. Yeah. She was fine. Actually. She was laughing. She was like jolling around. Literally, just seeing someone you really care about just die and I perish. Love, I love how Sagan's like here's some travel vlog music. Like he just went onto YouTube and was like. Travel vlog, Casey Neistat. <laughs> and uh, as they're all like off at the end, they're like, see you, doctor, bye. Dun, 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 what are you two going to do, do now? Do, do, Might have do, a honeymoon. Time lapse. Time lapse. New York very City. Casey Neistat. Time lapse. Oh, I kind of does, I guess. Time lapse. Right, what, what would you do a Casey song for me? Um. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> just different shots of New York. <laughs> oh, you don't see it? I see it. I'm picturing it. I'm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my my big boyfriend you remember the week was just you know girl. Yeah, you don't give a shit about who died in front of you. You live your own fucking life, girl. 
You got this. Big daughter energy moment of the week. Because there isn't one. Mm, let me think. Outside of that, there is not one. Um, yeah, you're, you're really... I'm really um, racking my brains here to try and find one. Ryan had jokes. Every single one fell so flat. You could just tell that Tosin was like, this is terrible. I this don't is- care. I just want to get that paycheck. Yeah. I guess if I had to pick one... Okay, big daughter energy moment. Um, the TARDIS had some friends in it this week. And I like that. I like when the TARDIS is full and it's being used. Yeah. 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 Save the I'm, homies. I'm reaching... Uh, okay, speaking of woman who died yep. and the girl who lived, I was about to say no that. pun intended, yep. uh, she has a vlog. She Show has a vlog. YouTube channel, I presume. Yes. Do you know who else has a YouTube channel? Ryan S., the famous YouTuber. Why didn't he say, <sighs> perfect character building here, oh folks? Oh, my God. Yeah, I used to do that before I went traveling. Yeah. Maybe I should have done it. Mm-hmm do that mm. another huge thing mm-hmm. for a little bit of character building mm. this bloke Mr. Ten Pound Pom okay mm-hmm. he's going to Hong Kong to find his um, husband yes okay he's trying to kick down the door runs into Yaz and Graham mm-hmm. and he says who are you and they're like oh who are you and he's like I'm DCI blah blah so and so and then Yaz says you don't look like a police officer and he says who are you and then Yaz's like I'm the person with the keys Sorry, hold on a second. Why doesn't she say, Hey, I'm <laughs> Yasmin Khan, DS Yasmin Khan. Yeah. Why didn't she bring up she was a bloody police officer too? Why didn't they do that? These are just, these are the little bits of character you give us and they don't even bring it up. Mm-hmm. She doesn't once say, I'm a police officer too. And just be like, uh, mm-hmm. uh-uh, get in your place, girl. I'm a police officer too. Yeah. Do we get that? No, we don't. We're just going to see a rather than some keys that she magically has. What is character work? Not here. There was a nice scene with Graham. With Graham and, and Warren. What, when he says I'm used to the... When they're having a chat on the beach. Oh, yeah. And also, I like the he mentioned, because he's used to his treatment with the cancer, he yes. mentioned that he's good with, like, needles and... Yeah. Pr- uh, the tube things. I don't know. The tube things. The tube things. Okay, cool. Great. Woo. Mm. You're so great. Congratulations, you you did a great episode, guys. I'm so entertained. What did you think? How of... are you not entertained? What, what what did you think of Suki Chang, the villain? Oh my lord! <laughs> Give me a fucking break, please. I preferred her mate more. He was sweet. And he was he's fun, like, and he was like, "Oh, don't worry, guys. I'll look after the birds. So kill another one. Just go inside and do your thing." Ah, dies. dies. Yeah. He was cool though. I'm like, why do you have to look? Why do you have to like keep an eye on them? Like they're in the sky, they're going nuts. They're just gonna smash through the roof, which is what they do. Like 15 minutes later, who cares if mm. you keep an eye on them? Mm. They're birds. Are you scared of birds? Uh, birds scare me. I, I, you know when magpies kind of sweep that time of the year, and mm. it, I hate it. Magpie. I'm not scared of magpies. Oh, I'm uh, terrified. I'm spooked by them. I don't think I'm like I don't stay up at night going magpies. You know magpies. They're, in, they're in my faces though. Them fuckers. I think they're some nasty fuckers. That's creepy. That's I see places. them and they're like they don't have magpies in the UK, do they? Yeah. I oh yeah. So. Magpies electrical, surely. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> Ma- <laughs> Whenever I think of the UK birds, I just think of pigeons. <laughs> I think of Robin Redbreast. I think of yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, the other thing that I was thinking of, I was going to say that, but yeah, then I thought my dad's favorite bird, pigeons, was funny. Yeah, I always associate them reason. with my granddad for yeah. a longer story. Yeah, but no, nah, when I'm in the park and I see like if there's a magpie on the floor, I'm like, you're fine, bro, you're fine. But if I see a magpie in a tree, you mm. bet that I'm like not blinking. I'm like staring that magpie down as I'm walking around. If that fucking thing bats a wing, I'm there with the drop bear fists. It's you know, scary, man. But that, ooh. they're not black and white anymore. They're black and blue, baby. Oh, baby. Mm-hmm. They must have bad trust issues because who, how can you even reach to that high in the tree to take their precious eggs? I'm not doing that. Like, no, who they, does that? They want, I remember when I was a little kid, I had a little earring. And, I do remember um, that, yeah. And they like little shiny things. Yeah, they so like shiny stuff. They I used to like it. walk past with like my hands over my ear, like, don't, please don't steal my fucking earring, please. Did you still have the ear hole? No, there's like a. I think it might have gone by now, but last time I remember, there was like a tiny little bump of a sort of scar. I was gonna say, like, it was. doesn't it never heal? No, they do heal, but you, I, I think you, you always maybe have like a little bump. Do you know like the spacer things? The spaces you can get in your. Like, I've never had them. If that's no, I know, but like, do you ever wonder like, and this is with peace and love. I'm sure people love having them, mm-hmm. but like, do you ever wonder like what happens when you get a little bit older and like. You might not want to wear spaces all the time, and your ear's just going to be like this weird, like they don't look great. Like I've a seen weird, a weird hole in it, like being all saggy. 
look, you do you, kiddos. You do what you want, but it ain't for me. I'm just going to put that out there. It ain't for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wonder about that sometimes mm-hmm. at night when I'm sleeping. I've got a hole in each ear already, and I'm perfectly fine. I don't need holes that don't make me hear any better. If you could lose one of your senses, which one would you lose? That's fucked. I know, it's hard. Um, Because they're all so good. Smell. smell. Really? Because taste, I'm a big, like, I love, like, taste. I love, like, just trying different foods that taste really good. But um, isn't a lot of taste smell, like, when you eat? No. Nah, like, obviously, yeah, the two go hand in hand together. They're really good. But I could live without smell. Sight, mm-mm. Sound, mm-mm. Those two, they're my main boys. I need to be able to fucking see TV and listen to music. But, and I, I like to eat food. But we just said how nice a, a, a new book smells. You won't be able to... And a new Blu-ray smell. That lovely plastic. That smells for about three seconds, new Blu-rays. Which, by the way... Which is why when you open it, you got to go... <laughs> and then it's like gone forever. It disappears into the air. you you got to inhale as much of that bad boy as you can. Blu-ray... Disney's pulled out of the Blu-ray game? Physical media? Ridiculous. Yeah, they suck. Wait, does that mean no Doctor Who? Could do. Oh, shit. It's fucked. Oh, shit. But also, once Disney pulls the plug, what's next? Fucking Warner Bros. will be like, oh, yep, Disney did that. We can might as well do that. All these companies, they're just going to one by one pull the plug. And then you feel for companies like JB Hi-Fi and, and just like, uh, mm. you know, first it was Video Easy and stuff that died. And now Video you're going to slowly start to see, you know, JB Hi-Fi used to be way more of like an entertainment um, thing than it is now. Now it's much more, it's got a lot of home appliances in there. It's expanded way more than it used to be. And I think that comes as a bit of a result of yeah. changes in the market like that. I think it sucks. Well, they're just going to make it harder and harder for you to do it. It's like with like um, cards, like you have like Apple Pay now and yeah. that kind of thing. Like they're making it... But put it this way. You, you, it's it's like almost impossible to use cash these days. Like who uses cash? Yeah, but cash isn't a collector's item. That's not true. Okay. I collect coins. Well, you it's collect, really lame. Yeah, but you but collect fucking bottle caps as well. I used to. Okay, I still, still have them though. <laughs> they sit. There's one Bud Light one in there. Okay, it's an American beer. You can't. Well, you can buy it. It's very rare. Well, yeah. I just think there's got to be a better answer than just discontinuing. No, I agree. Like, it sucks. Like whether it's just like stopping the mass creation of them and just making maybe not putting everything out on Blu-ray, but like making just more collectors based Blu-rays. Maybe they're five dollars more expensive. Yeah. You know, but just. Because that is such, like, people want that. And that's how people love your stuff. How often do you rewatch a movie that you've seen on Disney Plus? Um, mm, a movie, not really. Like, stuff like The Simpsons I'll rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just think people don't... Streaming is such, like, a... You, you watch everything and you just feed the brain with it and you kind of throw it out a little bit afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you are going out of your way to buy Blu-rays, you hold that stuff dear to you. Mm. And I, I just seriously think you lose that with streaming. No, I, I totally agree with you. Like, I think obviously to an extent, like they can't, they can't put like, there's a reason why they would never release like say Secret Invasion, which ended yesterday, which was an absolute dog shit. Right. Like they're never going to release that on Blu-ray because no one's going to want it because it fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. But I can see, for example, like if we're on the superhero TV show topic, like they did Blu-ray releases for like Daredevil and Jessica Jones and stuff. Yeah. Like, I can understand why people would want to get that on Blu-ray. Well, it- like just don't release everything, but. But release stuff that people actually care about and want to get. In the US, they've announced that they're doing a One Division steelbook that doesn't include the Blu-rays. So the steelbook is like a steelbook Blu-ray case with art cards in it and things like that, but not a Blu-ray. So is it a digital code? No. Right, that is weird. It, it's just the steelbook. It's just to go on your shelf with your other Marvel so that, steelbooks. That's it. So wait, so wait so what well, that doesn't make sense so, so that way be no, you'll never get be... rid of your Disney Plus membership that's fucking like on it oh they try and stop me well so what they're not going to have any Star Wars Blu-rays and no I guess not Marvel that's what they said Blu-ray. like literally like Sanity well, no. Sanity put up a post and was like make sure you grab all the Star Wars Blu-rays before they all sell out or something like that like you're kidding me no 100% man it's fucking crazy do you ever feel like the world has gone nuts? I do. Like this... that happened, COVID happened. There was aliens confirmed today. I don't what? Know if you heard about that. Yeah. Okay, we don't have time to talk the U- about that. The US confirmed aliens. Okay, we will maybe... There was a spaceship and they said it was, a, it was unidentified and it had non-human people in it. Right, well, 
Disney Plus is also taking down its own Disney Plus original content. Yeah. So it will never be out. As exclusive to Disney Plus. Yeah. So there's stuff that you can't watch. There was apparently a really good documentary. I think it was on making the sound of Wakanda forever. It was on Disney Plus for like three weeks and it was taken down. There was a big kids movie where kids go to space. It was on Disney Plus for like a month and it was taken down. What the fuck? Like... One, it's such the creators involved. That's huge. You know, they've got a big piece of work that no one's able to ever watch. But number two is like, whatever happened to the idea of, you know, a, a movie would be a flop on TV, but it'll be a massive home video or streaming hit, right? If you're putting but stuff there. straight onto streaming and, and it's only available for like a month before you just get rid of it forever, it's never going to slowly build up an audience. People aren't going to slowly find stuff if you're getting rid of it the second it bloody flops. Mm. Sorry, it mad world. Fucking struck a nerve with me to all this shit because it, it's no, it, it's it is bad. Like physical media means a lot to me. I wonder if there'll be a lot of like pirating. Ugh. And I mean, I mean, when I say pirate, I mean it's like the best way. I wonder if there'll be like independent uh, sources that would sell Blu-rays, but obviously wouldn't legally own the rights to the episode but they like we just sell it like under the table almost and you get the copy of it i think you'll maybe find more distributors that go sort of what i was saying in terms of making more collector's items the criterion yeah. collection is a i've bought a few of their blu-rays and they're basically like they're very the criterion collection is movies really impactful movies movies that signify a specific type of genre or just really incredible movies right and they release them on blu-rays and they get the directors involved to overlook special features and, and overlook the packaging and they get everything run by the director to make it a perfect like collector's release i've got the marriage story one of that which Look, is I, really nice we're all gonna die from aliens but soon, I, so who cares my point is that i think you'll find more companies maybe like that coming up that are trying to make more collector's item blu-rays until the aliens come and shoot their ray guns <sighs> shoot me now all right and you're done having your tantrum now i'm done sucking my fucking <laughs> having a crybaby moment okay what a what a sour grapes episode with the four sorry fall off that's 50%. your old podcast Jesus sorry Christ. <laughs> sorry what the fuck am i doing this guy's nuts we are rebranding a segment that was formerly called what the boys watch this week instead for something that's a little bit more streamlined of a name we're going to talk about the other 50 <laughs> Yeah, someone literally said this week on the podcast on the comments like i don't get what the other 50 percent means and i was like and you never will <laughs> the other 50 percent is when yeah, we you, you never will talk about things that aren't doctor who I, I replied that it was a it was a meta joke meta yeah so i thought you know we, we don't have to talk about everything because we don't do this every week mm. Um, we, this is just like we've got a bit of time to kill let's do an ep uh, segment of the other 50 hey mate you're the one that fucking rants for 10 minutes I'm all good I know I'm gonna get through this pretty quick alright um, so Mission I Impossible 7 you saw it yeah so just to follow up on oh, your... yeah, I said how I felt about it so you, you yeah got... I just wanted to follow up and say I think it's great I thought it was good too I loved it I thought the action was incredible Done. I went on my own on a Monday night to watch it and it was like me and like four other people in a massive Cinemax cinema did you crunch your popcorn um, I didn't have popcorn. I just sat there with uh. a bottle of water. Maybe I did have popcorn. I went to cinema a lot this last week. And so uh, I think that was the one where I got myself popcorn. Because I was like, Mission Impossible is a fucking popcorn music. Pop yeah, I, I've got to do it. All right. Uh, Barbie Heimer happened this week. I haven't seen Barbie yet. I'm seeing it on Sunday. Oh, uh, you suck. I know. I wasn't able to. I, I really wanted to, but it all fell apart, mate. Busy weekend. Uh, but let's both just quickly talk about Oppenheimer. What did you think? Um, yeah, so I, I did the double feature actually, like in the same day. Amazing! So I applaud you. I was so. I wish that was me. That was actually such an enjoyable experience. Yeah, mm. I really loved it. I yeah. thought last thirty minutes maybe could have been a little bit. I don't know. I think it could have been a little bit shorter. But then again, I I was thinking back on all the scenes. And I was like, I don't know what maybe you could have cut out or made. Mm. I don't know. Either way, it was a bit too long. But yeah, a bit long. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. A lot more than I thought I would. And I thought it was 10 times better than that dumpster fire tenant. I have a uh, review on my YouTube channel for That's Oppenheimer a video a essay. Aiden Green. Aiden Green, yeah. Not Green Productions. Or I think anymore. with the tag, Rip. it goes Aiden Green Reviews, I think, because he had little tags that you have to name separately. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why they do that anymore. 
But yeah, I um, I really liked it. Uh, to be honest, I saw it a pretty late session after a really long day. Ooh, a three hour film. Yeah, I know. I was like, this is rough. And so I definitely, that influenced my viewing. But the first hour I thought was pretty messy and pretty rushed. The middle hour and a half I thought was amazing. And Ooh. I was like, this is Nolan at his best. And then the first half hour... I was way too tired to judge properly, but I think it was really good. I think it's an amazing film. Even that first hour, it's like, it's really good, but I thought was just really messy and choppy. Yeah, I, I really liked it. I, you know, it's so funny. In, in America, I saw they're doing like a session at like 2.30 a.m. So it would end at like six in the morning. Yeah, that, that's they, ridiculous. They do that kind of... America and the UK, that they have sessions. Nuts. I think they have centers that like don't close. Yeah, pretty much. Because I know Brett's like, yeah, I go there at like 2 a.m. Oh, God, Brett right uh barbie let's go party yeah i really enjoyed it uh Dean, I'm so will excited. i ever watch it again probably not but it was shooty. really enjoyable shooty shooty was great yeah yeah he's i couldn't i couldn't ever take my eyes off him I'll, because i I'll was be the same i was just judging every single movement that man made and even yeah. when he was in the background like our focus like i was just keeping my eyes on him. there he probably, is probably should have been listening to what was going that's on that's my son like, that's, that's my, my boy. boy he's really good in it He's not in it tons. Yep. And um, personally speaking, I'm speaking from bias here because I love Shooty. I think he would, should have been um, one of the main Kens. Right. But okay. um, yeah, I think he's really great in it. And uh, yeah, it was awesome to see him in it. And yeah, again, I just didn't take my eyes off him. But yeah, fun movie. I probably won't ever watch it again, but I think it had a really good message. And, you know, there's people out there complaining about the Barbie movie when there's a movie called Oppenheimer out right now, which is actually real life about an atomic bomb that mm -hmm. killed was it 300 400,000 people more than so, that uh, surely it killed a fucking city so two cities yeah if you're out there complaining about the Barbie movie which is not real maybe we should uh, talk about Oppenheimer maybe we should nuke you that that's happens. Connor's that's yeah Connor's let's go nuke them let's yeah, nuke you'll, the have Barbie you'll have fun with it I think alright the bear season 2 yes. it's on Disney Plus it's an FX show mm. I notorious absolutely adored season 1 Simp Aiden Simp Aiden Connor was like yeah it's really good and then the more we spoke about it you were like meh I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I liked it a lot, actually. Have you Fuck finished you. season two yet? I'm on Fishes. Which is six? Episode six. six. The hour-long hour -long episode? episode? Man, great. Great Good episode. old Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, yeah. Bob's in Sorry, it. Sorry, like I said, I, I saw that new medication and it just made me want to fucking fall asleep. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not focused enough and I need to be focused for this episode. But yep. I watched half of it and I thought it was great. What and, do you think um, in general of the season? Really enjoying it. It's amazing. I like I like what they're doing with the whole like revamp of the restaurant. Yeah. I really like that. And um, it's a different take to what I thought they were going to do. And Definitely. I think it's good. And um, I was so yeah, pleasantly... Yeah, I'm trying to rush it because it's going to be ages till, especially with the strike on right now. Nothing can film. Yeah. So. I was so pleasantly surprised with just how it subverted expectations and did mm. something really different with it. Mm. And whilst um, season one was much more about you know the the obsession and and people that are like so focused on this job it's their life and stuff i mm. thought like this season's much more about gaining perspective mm -hmm. and how that can ultimately help you in in your workplace and things like that i agree super easy show to watch like it's, oh, it's, so, it's easy. so easy to watch and if, if you're if you're wondering if you'll get into it like i think you will like it's so easy to get into and it's funny it's dramatic it's hot it's so easy just to get into it mm -hmm. so um yeah also some incredible cameos this season very good cameos like episode four yes. one? Yes. oh yeah. my that, god that was uh yeah that was interesting and there's a huge one at the end of episode seven as well oh really and episode seven i think is my favorite episode of the season it's really fucking good i think you'll like it do you like richie yeah yeah you i think it's like a richie episode i look i i knew a few of the cameos just from like cast announcements but yeah they, they've all been really good yeah mm. and um i also started futurama which right you never watched before i've no. never really been interested so in, obviously like huge simpsons fans my second favorite show of all time and mm -hmm. um yeah i've never liked futurama as a kid but now i'm watching it and i'm quite enjoying it we'll see if i keep watching it i hope i do but there's a new season right now, Aaron. Like, the first episode came out on uh, Tuesday. So, they're doing, like, the 11th season, I believe, or 10th. Uh, so, I came for that. And, obviously, I got this bad boy. Yeah, I was going to say, talk to me about the book that is in front of you. I'm in three chapters in, which wow. is really cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm, like, 20 pages in. See, Waters of Mars, uh, target novel. How many pages is it? Uh, that would be... That's the first thing I do. Uh, 188. Ooh, beefy boy. Yeah, well, it's not beefy, so. but it's beefy. There's some target novels. Like the one I'm reading right now is 160. Yeah, okay. So Yeah, um, I'm just super keen. And like from what I've read already, like it just seems to be going into more backstory, which is something that I, I'm just a nerd and I care about these kind of things. Feed me it. Like, Feed the pony. I'd be interested to see like a casual reader who hasn't watched the episode 800,000 times like I have. Yeah. Um, if they'd be interested in it. 
and care about the characters that much but i do i, I and it goes in deeper into like all the all the people on bow base one like all their backstories and stuff and their families which makes it a bit more tragic when they all mm. perish so well, I, yeah super keen to read it and there will be a new who trip vlog out the book. week the week that this video comes out i'll be out man. it's agents and Connors pod has their going doc who <laughs> refuse you missed who doing no you missed tor a doc who <laughs> Wow, is this, is, this, is this what happens when we don't drink? We're just like lifeless. We just kind of around like, at the end of the show. We're like, oh, I thought that was fun. Thought nah, it was great. great. You know, you don't need alcohol to have a good time, Aiden. No, I had a good time. Did you? I had a great time. Good. High five for good time. <laughs>